Welcome back everyone, it's Sylvia from Aussie Scrapper. Today's layout is going to be all about this beautiful little boy who has unfortunately passed over and is now one of our little angels. I will be using the Kaisercraft Paul Perfect collection and this collection is for all those crazy cat people out there. I don't normally use a lot of ephemera, but in this case, I did buy the ephemera pack. Kabuki was actually my husband's cat. He was here before I came along, so I had to learn to get along with a cat. Prior to Kabuki, I was not a cat person. When our two children came along, I was actually worried about this cat, but he has been the most gentle loving soul you could imagine. Never once has he scratched the kids, even though there were times when they damn well deserved a good scratching. I was very surprised at how much I cried when he did pass over. My husband had him for a very long time. In total, he lived to be about 21 or 22, we're not 100% sure. The papers in this collection are absolutely gorgeous and very fitting for any cat lover out there. I do love Kaisercraft. The only issue that I have with Kaisercraft is that their papers are not thick enough, strong enough. I'm not sure what the word really is. I would really want to know the GSM of Kaisercraft's papers because I just find that I usually have to back them on some cardstock. I also bought the sticker pack that came with the collection and it's just got some marvellous beautiful cat quotes on it. This is the paper that I do land up choosing as the base for my layout. I'm having a mental blank. I'm trimming off the that strip there that comes on the bottom of all papers. Oh my gosh. Anyway, I just love the quote on it which says the smallest V line is a masterpiece. And I learned something because it was a quote from Leonardo da Vinci. There you go. I didn't even know that Leonardo da Vinci was a cat person. I decided to match the photo on some black cardstock as I wanted the photo to stand out. I will also be trimming just a little bit off all four sides of this paper as I know that I want to back it on some black cardstock. For two reasons mainly, I want to tie it in with the mat around the photo and also because I know this paper is not strong enough to withhold the mixed media that I'm going to put on it. I'm just marking where the photo is going to go just as a guide so that I don't really put a lot of mixed media around the areas that you're not really going to see it. And of course, to protect my paper just that little bit more and make it a little bit sturdier, I'm going to be using some clear gesso. While my paper is drying I'm going to be working on the layers that are going to go behind my photo. It is at this stage that the layout starts coming together in my head anyway and it's this is the point where I decide you know what I want this to have a scratch look about it like the cat went in there and just ripped the paper with his nails so that's why you see me tearing bits and pieces off the paper. I want it to look rough and scratched I guess is the word I'm looking for. I do use both sides of the paper and I just turn it around I think oh yes that looks nice too so I start tearing more paper and uh, yeah I really really like the effect that this had. Um, it's one of the layouts that I am really happy with. I love how it turned out and yeah, I, w I was just really happy with it. I will admit that I did spend a considerable amount of time tearing my paper and getting it just right. I know on the video it looks like I just tore it, and yes I did, but I did spend quite a lot of time placing the paper in all the right places and tearing bits and pieces off here. And Yeah, but it was really really worth it because I'm so happy with this layout. As pretty as these papers are I'm going to grunge them up a bit. So I took out my distress oxide and the colour I'm using is the black soot. I spray it with some water and then I just go in and pick up some of that ink 
with the paper. I just continue putting the paper into the ink till I like the look of what I see on my piece of paper and then I will put the paper aside to dry and I pick up the next one and I do the process all over again till all my papers have got the black soot on them. And then just looking at it on that side there on the uh, left hand side, I quite like how it looks. Now that all the torn pieces of paper are inked and dried, I'm moving along with the next colour which is iced spruce and I'm doing exactly the same process to all the pieces of paper. Something I learnt the hard way is that you must let the ink dry in between colours otherwise the effect that you want is not going to work. The third colour that I'm using is antique linen and I don't know if I've said it before but I just love, love this colour. I just want to use it as a highlight this time round so I'm trying to be gentle and not get it everywhere. As I'm going for a real distressed look to my layout, I'm just taking the branded strip here and just using a Tim Holtz distressing tool just to distress all the edges and then I will actually ink them all with some black salt. My gesso has all dried now so I am ready to do some more mixed media. And I'm, all I'm doing here is the famous packaging technique. If you are not familiar with the packaging technique, all it is is you get a piece of plastic, you put some ink on it, you spritz it with some water and voila, slap it down. The first colour that I'm putting down here is the Distress Oxide in Black Soot. I'm going to be doing the whole process all over again, but this time I'm going to be using the colour Vintage Photo, just to add a bit more brown to that background paper. For a highlighting colour, I will be using a third Distress Oxide, and that is Iced Spruce. And just doing the packaging technique all over again, but this time in just a few random places. The crazy hand actions that you see here is just me putting some water on the palms of my hand and then just sprinkling it down everywhere just to get that oxidisation effect that Distress Oxides are famous for. I am now just trying to recreate the layers that I had behind this photo originally. What I should have done is I should have taken a photo and then things might have been a little bit easier for me. This is where I stuff up. But I left the footage in just so that you know that, you know, if you do make a mistake, no biggie, just hide the evidence. I really have no idea what I was thinking, but putting gesso on this lovely paper just was not going to work. And then I decide, oh, I'll just get the paintbrush with some water and that will lighten the effect. No, it just made everything worse. So I turn it around and I hide the evidence of my stuff up. And that way, no one is ever going to know. This is one of my favourite layouts in a very long time. I really, really like how it turned out. I love the photo of Kabubi. I don't know, or maybe it is because it's a tribute to Kabubi that I love this layout so much. I really don't know. And I also had so much fun making this and I really enjoyed scrapping this layout. I'm just trying to add some scratches down the page just to make it look like his claws went down the page and just tore the paper, if that makes any sense. So to give me an idea of where to rip the paper, I just sort of put my hands into a sort of a claw-like type thing and sort of gauge it from there. I know, sometimes I just think I'm crazy. Maybe I am, who knows. Crazy or not, I really like the effect that this had on the page. Once I add the black card stock behind these claw marks, it just makes everything pop. So of course, what do I do? I have to distress all the edges of this layout only because, well, it just looked a bit too tidy when everything else is so distressed and grungy. 
Time to play with the ephemera. I really struggle with ephemera and I, on this layout in particular, I don't know if it's because it's just one of the issues I have with ephemera or if it's because there is so much happening already on it that I, I really didn't feel that I needed to add a lot more to it. I tried so hard to make the meow work, but it just did not go on the layout. Then I've got this seed for cat, which I just left there to see if it grew on me. But no, that goes as well. And I knew that I definitely wanted to use the eat, nap and repeat because at this stage in Kabibi's life, that's basically what he did. He ate, he napped and then he repeated the whole process all over again. I love this tag and I do land up using it, but not as it is only because it just didn't seem to fit in with the rest of the layout. So all I'm doing is, as I did earlier, I'm just going to distress it and grunge it up a bit more. I start off by using the ooh, vintage photo and then I use some black soot and I think I end up highlighting it with some iced spruce. And of course no tag is complete without a bit of string to add to it so I go into my stash and I just use some twine in the colours, I think it was black and brown so I've got two there and they look the same on the screen here but one's black and one's brown. For my title I'm going to be using these Amy Tangerine Thickers. They're called Cal Parteski and they're just foam leather stickers. As this is a tribute to Kabubi, I'm just going to give this a very simple title and it's just going to be called Kabubi. I've pulled out the sticker sheet and I thought, yes, if I use two of those balls of wool, I can now use the ephemera Eat, Nap and Repeat because I was dying to use this piece of ephemera. But so I just stick it on there. And then, of course, I think, oh, no, it doesn't tie in with the rest of the layout. It needs a bit of grunging up. So I'm just using some iced spruce, and then I will ink the edges with some black salt. We're nearing the end of the layout, so thank you very much to everyone. Thank you to all my subscribers. There are some still photos at the end. Until next time, bye, everyone.